How many of you are still paying for college? Or better yet, anybody paying for their kids to be in college? Yes, I see you. Anyone like me that's just scared to death thinking about what it's going to cost by the time your kids get to college? Well, a few years ago, my then five-year-old daughter, Mia, received a dental Barbie, and she loved it. I mean, she immediately started asking thoughtful questions like, how can we stop getting cavities, and how can we make it less painful in the dental chair and more fun in the uh, waiting room? And I'm like, she really gets this business model from just playing with Barbie. So like all neurotic parents, I went to Google to find out how much it was going to cost to send our five-year-old to dental school. And you'll imagine my surprise when the second article listed noted that 50, women dentists make 50% less than men. Seriously, dental Barbie took me down a rabbit hole because then I found out that while 65% of the insurance workforce is made up of women, they make 40% less than men. And did you know that only 24% of law firm partners are women? Wait for this one. 99% of investment management firms are owned by white men. 99%. Dental Barbie had single-handedly dashed all my dreams for Mia in a few hours. But I know you all have had a few drinks, and we're here to have a good time and be inspired, and nobody really wants to talk about the gender pay gap. But candidly, it is the primary reason that causes all of the issues that relate to gender equity in every area of life, especially the workplace. Frankly, I'd like to talk about the elephant in the room, which is that Mark Zuckerberg has perfected the algorithm that lets me know immediately when Jimmy Choo's go on sale at Nordstrom's, but paying men and women equally for the same work seems to be the great mathematical mystery of our time, and, or at least for 95 years, right, because that's when the pay gap is expected to close. So let's thank you for letting me acknowledge that. Let's talk about something we can all agree, our love of Oklahoma and our desire to make sure everyone inside our borders and outside knows this is a great place to live, work, and do business. Now, by show of hands, how many of you believe that Oklahoma, while we may not be perfect in, in relation to gender equity, can, women can still thrive and um, be successful here? Right. Well, in March of this year, Personal Finance website ranked us 49th for the overall health and safety for women. We're 50th for uninsured women and 50th for incarcerating them. And wait for it. We're 48th for that darn gender pay gap. I mean, you got to love Louisiana and Utah, right? <laughs> but listen, this isn't trash talk. I'm a native Oklahoman. I'm a fifth generation Oklahoman. My family was here before statehood. I'm all in. This is my license plate. It says great state. My Instagram handle is I am Oklahoma. But after a lifetime of disappointing stats and what seems to be a disconnect in how we value women with our policy, for the sixth generation, is it right for Mia to make her life here? This is the home of the Oklahoma standard, and we can do better. But I'm sure many of you are asking, how can I make a difference, and what are the real issues? Well, together, we can ignite change that will move the needle, and here are four really easy ways. First, if you're in leadership, put women in decision-making roles. <laughs> a study by the pipeline showed that of the 21% of companies where a third or more of their leadership are women, yield profits 10 times greater than that where they're not there. I mean, this is math, yeah. Um, if you're gonna hire an attorney or a CPA, any professional service provider, include women in the process. Ask your current providers how many women are in decision-making roles and if they have a diversity plan. And third, use your money to support brands that value women with their policy and, frankly, have women throughout their organization, including leadership. And fourth, give women a shot. I wouldn't be standing here today if 20 years ago John Q. Hammonds hadn't hired me to open the Renaissance Hotel in the city's convention center, which then provided the opportunity for Clay Bennett to hire me to lead the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. Listen, those are my people. Listen, if you're a woman, a parent, anyone in this room that cares about this community, a leader, a corporate leader that wants us to be competitive in the future, gender equity has to matter to you the most. I'm embarrassed to say that earlier in my career, I didn't pay much attention to what these numbers meant to the women and the families in our community or the health of our economy. But gender equity has to be a priority, and it is a team sport. So let's go over again what we need to do together as a team. Some of you can do all four, which is put women in leadership, hire women service providers, 
Make sure that you're supporting brands that value women and give women a shot. Listen, you know, I've had a lot of fun tonight at the expense of Dental Barbie, and um, seeing these inequities through Mia's eyes has, has, has frankly changed a little bit about how I see things, and it's also provided me an opportunity to want to make change. As it relates to her future and what it means to her, I hope it's at least given you a new perspective. And if you're still one of those people that think this really isn't an issue, or at least one that affects you, I'll leave you with this. If men and women were paid equally, are you listening? If men and women were paid equally, we could eliminate half the poverty in our country overnight and inject $512 billion into our economy. Trust me, gender equity is good business. Thank you.